Contact! Do you need topping up? Oh. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, please don't interrupt this time. All papers, documents, and identification, if any, were burnt to a cinder. And then there's the question of the number plates, or rather, the lack of them. Someone removed them before the ambush. And you were quite right, of course. The assailants had no idea that it was a waxwork dummy. They thought it was a real person. So the question is not why, but who? Who is the VIP hiding behind the molten features of a waxwork dummy? And no, I don't think your idea of consulting Madame Tussauds would serve any useful purpose. Because you already know the answer, don't you? Charlie Crippin!
Nice crop you have here. Yeah. No English? What do you want from me, huh? <laughs> you speak good English. Your name, uh, Signor Mardi, isn't it? Polizia? Uh, well, kind of. I uh, like to ask you a few questions. I think you know what it's about. Look, I've told the Polizia all I know. Well, these really are nice potatoes. Where do you sell these? Oh, in, in the Bellagio, just to pass those trees there. Listen, you were on the scene when that car blew up. I'd really like to talk to you about it. Look, I know nothing. Are you certain there was nobody around when you came on the car? No one. You must have been there seconds after it happened. Did you see anybody running away? I saw nothing. Nothing. Perhaps there were men there, but I was looking at the car. Well, maybe you heard something unusual. I heard nothing. Not even a machine gun? I heard nothing, I tell you. Anyway, the noise of my truck would drown everything. She's old, my truck, you see. And she's like a woman. If you drive her too hard, she complains. She complains loudly. All right, so you're driving hard. Any particular reason? Look, I explained to the polizia once or twice or three times. I'm on my way home to see my wife, my bambino. I'm a tired. I'm a hungry. All I want to do is get home. So, all right, I drive hard. I come around this corner. I see the car. It is burning. I look. I think I see a man inside. It is a dummy. That is all I know. Why are you bothered with me? The car. Check the car. It will know more than I do. They were obviously expecting trouble. Fingerprints? Just one distinctive one. On the rear door. Oh? Belonging to Antonio Mardi, the man who pulled the dummy out. Just a few hundreds of miles on the, on the clock. Yes, I saw. A man with a car like this probably had several. I don't suppose he used this one much. There's bullets. 280 caliber. From an ordinary machine gun. Mm. May I have your pen knife? You found something? I think so. Oh. Oh, we missed that. What is it? I don't know. But I want an analyst report on that. Mr. King? Mr. Jason King? Yes? Mr. King, you could do me a great personal favor. One that you would not regret, and one that I should never forget. Regret? Forget? It's like a... Promise. Come with me, Mr. King. Mind the shop, Charlie. Now, this one. Yes. This one is for my Aunt Sophia. Aunt Sophia, yes. Yeah. She is very romantic. Yeah? She adores Mark King. Oh. She says she reminds her of her late husband, Giuseppe. Yes? Gina, what are you doing this evening? Oh, I shall deliver these books to my family. Well, I was hoping that we could, uh... They will be so grateful to you. Yes? Now this one. Sign it to my friend. To my friend? No, 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 no. No? To my very good friend, Umberto. Oh. Very good friend. Umberto. Mm -hmm. He is my favorite uncle. Oh, yeah. He is uh, something big in the mafiosa. You understand? Oh. When no one is supposed to know, but it is true, I assure you. Well, I don't think that I should... But you have not signed this one. This one is for my cousin, Fabiola. Uh, Fabiola. The prettiest girl in the whole of Napoli. Yeah? To... Put that in the book. What? To the prettiest girl in the whole of Napoli. Well, I, I don't think I can do that, because I haven't seen... See... She is my Uncle Umberto's daughter. Uh, oh. To the prettiest girl in the whole of... Napoli. Napoli.
You are leaving, Maria. No, not yet. I'll be coming back. I'm on my way to the cemetery now. Of course. I hate going there. I feel so... I feel so guilty. Don't, Maria. It is right what you are doing. It is right what we are all doing. Remember that. I'll try. Oh, my goodness, I must go. My plane leaves in less than three hours. I will say goodbye now, in case I do not see you again. Goodbye. We must all make sacrifices. I know. Someone else is checking on the peasant Marty. Police? I don't know. I have not seen this man before. He is not from Napoli. The man Marty. If there is trouble, he will do what we say. He has a wife, children. He will understand. Of course. But we will be careful, hmm? The thing to remember is that there are only a few more days left. Then, then it will be all over. I have another job for you. An important one. One that you will find very much to your liking. My last visit, Father, here. Yeah. I've, I've decided to return home. I'm glad to hear this, my child. I know you must grieve a great deal that your husband's body lies forever in a foreign land. But you have made the right decision, I'm sure. I hope so, Father. I hope so. In your own country, you have many friends. Forgetting the past will be that much easier. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, my child. They have a man watching the villa, Slovik. His death would help our cause. Gold? Hmm, 22 carat, according to the tests. Something that was found on the dummy? Probably. Now, why should anybody want to put gold on a dummy, even if it isn't standing? I discovered something else, too. According to the millimeter, the car had only done 700 miles. We already know it's a new car. Now, I checked out Marty. I just don't see him being mixed up in this thing. How about you, Jason? Well, apart from Uncle Umberto and his clan, and recovering from writer's cramp, and a few other diversions, Charlie and I have been putting the known facts in their right perspective. Perspective? On two decanters? I haven't touched a drop. It was Charlie, not me. Here are your tickets, Maria, and enough money to last you a month. Thank you. But when will he be allowed to follow me? Just as soon as our work here is completed. Now, don't you worry. You'll take great care of him. Danik? Herr? Have you seen him? I can't be sure. I thought I saw him with his dogs, but it was just a glimpse. I will just assume he is alive. There will be no announcements. Stay where you are. I will send someone to relieve you.
really beautiful card, Mr. King. Very. Just look at the line. Classic. Not exclusive. Mark Kane had a Klondike special Mark II. I beg your pardon, sir. The Klondike Mark II. I'm sorry. I'd never heard of such a card. You're obviously not a Mark Kane fan. Uh, this card has a television. There was a miniature electric organ in the back of the Klondike Mark II. Mark Kane composed fugues on the way to his various assignments. How, how many of these have you sold recently? Say, in the last, what, three months? Excuse me, sir. Mm? Oh. In the last three months, sir, uh, from this branch, uh, only one. Uh, to Count von Streicher, the industries, arms, guns, tanks. Otto uh, von Streicher? I wonder what he thought of it. He said the Villa Rosa on the Via Benita. Oh, no, sir, you are mistaken. Mistaken? Well, I delivered it, sir, to the Villa Mendez on the coast road to the south of the bay. Well, he must have moved. Villa Mendez? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you, sir. So, it appears to be working, Slovik. Yes, sir. The girl went with the police to the mortuary. Mm, good. They gave her the pie. Slovik. When our task is finished, your good work will be rewarded. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Do stop scratching on that wretched blackboard. It has its uses, you know. You're even beginning to sound like her. That girl's having a terrible influence on you. Oh, we're just talking about you. I'm glad you found something interesting to discuss, Roger. <laughs> what happened with the police? They took me to the mortuary. Allowed you to leave. Don't mind him. He's in one of his more obnoxious moods. A man was murdered last night. They thought it might tie in. It appears they were right. I found this press cutting on the dead man. It relates to the Count von Streicher. Count von Streicher. Right. You're about three hours behind. Count von Streicher is a German industrialist. He's one of the wealthiest men in the world. Owns the Villa Mendez about 30 kilometers south of here. Jason went to a car showroom. He was fortunate enough to pick the one that sold von Streicher a car, exactly like the wreck, not more than three months ago. Well. Oh. Confirms the information I got from the police. Have you noticed something? Mm. The insignia around his neck. It could have been what the dummy was wearing. Piece of gold. Charlie, why does a multi-millionaire need you as a stand-in? And don't you act dumb with me. It'll do you no good in the end. Was there anything else discovered on the body? No information. The police are certain he's not a local man. But there's a photograph. No good at all. I'm sure it was Kardec. Robert. I had to bribe the morgue attendant, but it, uh, it was Kardec. Too bad. He was a good man. I try to put myself in their place. I can think of no good reason for killing Kardec. Reprisal. But that is not like Svenovsky. It's not like him at all. Perhaps Kardec stumbled on something uh, too important for him to know about. Yeah, perhaps. In any case, we must make some move. Things are not working out as we hoped. Another attempt? Yes, and soon. He's obviously a connoisseur. I wouldn't do that if I were you. He probably knows exactly how much is in that bottle. Millionaires are the worst tightwads ever. Stuart, there's a mark on this decanter. He's obviously marked the level. Well, don't take it personally. Maybe he doesn't trust the servants. Hey, what do you know? A first edition Dickens. Do you suppose he reads any of these books? I shouldn't think so. If he's vulgar enough to mark his decanter, it's most unlikely. Well, I don't see any first editions of yours, Jason. I'm not surprised, Philistine. Wait outside. Well, how nice to see people relaxing. Do you enjoy reading, Mr... Uh... Sullivan, uh, sorry. Not at all. Please carry on. How do you do? My name is Jason King. 
We were hoping to see your husband, Countess. I'm afraid that's impossible. Please, Adele. Several years ago, my husband would have been delighted to meet you. He's a great Jason King fan, you know. Really? Unfortunately, these days, he sees hardly anyone. It is rather important. Oh, I'm sure it is, Mr. King. But my husband's decision is final. Now, I, I hope you're not going to press the matter. Well, if necessary, we could get a warrant. May I remind you that my husband is one of the richest men in the world. And uh, money can buy almost anything. Meaning that you have the police on your payroll? I don't care how you wish to interpret my remarks. Now, if you don't mind. What a pity. Especially, he's obviously a man of great taste. I was rather looking forward to autographing his Marquet novels for him. <laughs> Perhaps you have already, Mr. King. No, she certainly developed. Yeah, I noticed. I meant that she'd become more gracious since her marriage to Otto von Streicher. Well, you know her. Well, yes, she should be a top model in London several years ago. I thought she was rather attractive. What about von Streicher? He's dead. Well, it's a possibility. Charlie was a substitute for him. Well, why would they need a dummy to keep him alive? Money. His industrial empire stretches round the world. Imagine the effect his death would cause on the stock markets. Millions would be reduced on his shares. No, they're trying to buy time, time to secure their position. I thought she was rather... You know, it's logical, you know, except we can't assume that he's dead. We've got to have proof. I think we'd better pay another visit. Unannounced. What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. I thought she was rather attractive. Who? Anna Bell, darling. Paul Dupont, what on earth are you doing here? <laughs> what else? I am on an assignment. I have some very special pictures to take. They're the kind of magazines you work for, I can believe it. We give the public what they want. What would you like to drink, huh? Lemon juice. Dino, uh, one lemon juice, please. Now, what are you doing here? I'm taking a short vacation. Uh-huh. <laughs> Annabelle, you know something I'll tell you? You are the worst liar I know. I suppose I should take that as a compliment. It's true, I am on vacation. Now, you tell me about your assignment. Nothing to tell. Ah, oh, come on now, Paul. You can do better than that. I know you're just dying to tell me. Who is it you're after? Some uh, gorgeous Italian film star? No. How about a, a multi-multi-millionaire throwing an orgy aboard his yacht? <laughs> no such luck. I give up? Believe me, darling, I only wish I could tell you. It is something absolutely sensational. You would not believe it in a million years. You won't find him in there.
I think I've arrived at the right moment. Perhaps for you, hmm? Now, you're free to leave. But please, do not come back. Hold on to that. Mm. Thank well, you, I think. I can't let you two out of my sight uh, for five minutes. Come on. Tante Grazia. I'm Bonamante. <laughs> no, it should make it better. Mm. That confirms it. Count and Countess von Stryker was seen at the opening of the Fledermas. How's it feel? Fine. Anyway, we've achieved our objective. Yes, we have. We know von Stryker was a false trail. The question now is, who laid it? Charlie! I've discovered your guilty secret. Take a look at that. I'm looking for a friend of mine. He's in a private ward. Well, his name, please? Dupont. Really, Paul, stop feeling sorry for yourself. This kind of thing is an occupational hazard, isn't it? I don't think I was expecting sympathy. Well, I'm not sure that you deserve it. I can quite see the other side's point of view. You can't expect them to put up with a constant invasion of their privacy. Still, he treat you rather roughly. <coughs> Jason! Try and contain your delight. Good morning. Are you feeling better? Annabelle, uh, do you know this person? Well, now that he's here, I suppose I'd better introduce you. How do you do? My name is Jason King. May I? Mmm, delicious. Annabelle brought them. Ah, very considerate. She didn't even know I was here. Paul, may I ask you some questions? Look, can't you see he's not well? I'm sure it'd take more than that to accept Paul Dupont. And I'm willing to bet they didn't get away with too much either. Well, uh, there were uh, four, maybe five. Five? Magnificent. Well, what else could I do? What else, indeed? Uh, Jason, Don't I... Don't interrupt. What about King Freddy? Did you actually see him at the villa? Oh, yes, monsieur. I had him uh, right in my sides. I took maybe uh, 20, 30 shots of him at least. Before they took the film away. Mm. Did you notice anything different, unusual, about his appearance? No, I don't think so, except... Uh, yes? Well, he must have had something wrong with his eye, because he was wearing a... Uh, patch. A patch, exactly, and also uh, he needed a shave. He had uh, three or four days... Uh, you understand? Yes, I do, I do. So you can't be absolutely certain that it was Frederick? Oh, yes, monsieur, because... Uh, I have many times before seen uh, photographs of the king, and if it was not he, why would they attack me and take away my film? Yes, why indeed. Thank you, Paul, for being so helpful. I'm most grateful. Jason! What are you up to? All in good time. Sorry to bite your head off. Now use your phone. Certainly. Annabelle, uh, just, just one moment, Paul. Pronto. Oh, hello. I thought you were under sedation. I'm so glad. I'd like to put in a call to Paris, please. A servant, Father? Uh, yes. One of the retinue who chose to follow the king into exile. Now he will never return to his homeland. He leaves a widow, you know. No, I didn't. 
And she's still at the villa? No, she has chosen to return home. She took the death remarkably well. I remember when I was called in to administer the last rites. She stood erect, silent, obviously grief-stricken, but no tears. No tears? Yes. Her husband was already in a coma. There was little help if Mike could see that. What was the cause of death? Virus pneumonia. It was all over very quickly. He didn't suffer. A few days later, I buried him. Everyone at the villa attend the funeral? Oh, yes, everybody. Including His Majesty? Yes, of course. Even so, he was not at all well. I was thinking he ought not be standing at the graveside. It was raining torrents. Thank you, Father. You've been very helpful. Hi. Where have you been? I've been waiting for you for over an hour. And, and what kept you? And where's Jason? Calm down. I... He was at the hospital. Something serious? No, he went to see a friend of mine called Paul Dupont. He, uh, he asked him a lot of questions. When he left, he made a phone call. So? So I asked the nurse, and she said she couldn't remember anything about it, but that the call was to Paris. Apre la porta, eh? Parlez-vous français? Habla espagnol? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? What do you want? Oh, English. I want to see Captain Svanovsky. My name is Jason King. No one is allowed in here. Tell him I want to see him about a car without number plates. A car with no license. You understand? Car. No license. You tell him. Stoika. Divaye. Mr. Jason King to see you. Ah, oh, yes. Show me in. Mr. King, please. Thank you. What an interesting villa. Mr. King, I am Captain Svenovsky, King Frederick's aide. Can I offer you a drink? Thank you. I'll have a brandy. Now, what exactly was the message you gave my gate man? A uh, car without number plates. Ah, yes. It intrigued me. That's why I uh, asked you to come up to the house. Would you mind explaining? Thank you. I must compliment you on your choice, Captain. Trust one of my many vices, Mr. King. I think we're going to get on rather well. <laughs> that is optimistic of you. And I always like to start on an optimistic note. Shall we sit down? Thank you. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, you were going to explain. Uh, where would you like me to begin? It's entirely up to you. June the 25th this year. Yes, good day as any. An eventful day, certainly from your point of view. My point of view. On that particular day, His Majesty King Frederick died. 
Is that all you have to say, Mr. King? The last time I sampled this brandy was at the villa of a millionaire. If I may say so, yours is slightly premature. The name of the millionaire is Otto von Stryker, the German industrialist. That was very clever of you. I find this story is beginning to bore me, Mr. King. I paid my respects to His Majesty today in the churchyard of Sir Alfonso de Catina. Go on. The headstone says a certain Sida Pilic rests there. I'm equally certain that a post-mortem would prove otherwise. Would it be presumptuous to say that Sida Pilic and his wife are in your employ? Shall we say it is presuming a great deal? Probably due to your practicing art as a novelist. Excuse me. Come over here, please. Look out there. His Majesty King Frederick. If you were prepared to substitute a waxwork dummy for his daily drive, you were bound to substitute a live double for his daily constitutional. I'm a little tired of this conjecture. Frankly, so am I. Slavik Petrovsky. I'm afraid you're not nearly so clever as I thought you were, Mr. King. You disappoint me. Why can't he leave messages? He never has when he's gone missing before. Oh, Jason can be the most infuriating man. You can't just leave him to stew in his own juice. Teach him a lesson. Now, let me see. Jason was interested in Paul Dupont. Paul Dupont was interested in King Frederick. Right. Well, it's a long shot. We've got to be absolutely certain he's there. We can't just go charging in. We'll start off a diplomatic route we'd never hear the last of. Yes, but what? Good afternoon, sir. Miss Hurst? Sullivan. Hello. I was under the impression this was King's room. It is. Where is he? That's debatable. He phoned me up in Paris. As for this. King Frederick. I have his complete dossier with me. Take a look at this, Annabelle. That could be the piece of gold you found in the car. It also explains the absence of the number plates. Uh, monarchs are entitled to the privilege of not using them, right? Yes, but only in their own country. Still, it's typical of King Frederick to continue to take advantage of the privilege in exile. He's an arrogant man. Was an arrogant man. Was? We think he's dead. Would you mind acquainting me with the facts? Well, why else use uh, Charlie Crippen here as a substitute? Charlie Crippen? Uh, Jason named him. Yes, but there could be many reasons. Fear of attack, for instance. It's possible, but I think there's more to it than that. Jason visited a friend of Annabelle's in the hospital, a photographer, Paul Dupont. Paul was beaten up for trying to photograph the king. Why wouldn't they want King Frederick photographed? He's never shunned publicity before, especially if it served to further his cause. And what conclusion do you draw from that? Well, somebody's doubling for him. Because he's dead. I think I see your reasoning. And Jason reached the same conclusion. Went to King Frederick's villa, put the theory to whoever's in charge there. Without your knowledge? I'm afraid so. Then let's get started. The king must be in serious danger. Knowing what he does, they are unlikely to let him out alive. <laughs> well, you could at least fill me in with the background. To what effect? To practice my art, as you so fondly put it. <laughs> I really do admire your optimism, Mr. King. It concerns a sum of roughly 500,000 pounds. I thought so. It is the amount which will be paid into King Frederick's account in a few days' time uh, by an agreement reached with the ruling military junta. An agreement which is ratified at The Hague, I might add. And if the King's death were made public, no cash. Exactly. That is why we must keep him alive. And that is why we must keep you here. There's a difficult situation in King Frederick's country at the moment. The populace would welcome his return. If he's still alive. Right. There's a sizable guerrilla army fighting in the mountains, all loyal to him. But there's also a left-wing revolutionary group which will stop at nothing to keep him in exile. Naturally, the Junta is prepared to foster this group. 
You're certain? It must have been him. I tell you, he is alive. With the king alive, the people will never join our revolt against the junta. Senka, get the men together. Robert, take arms. This time, there must be no mistake. Kill everyone at the villa. Mr. King, you think I went to all this trouble just to line my own pockets? What else should I think? You leave me no alternative. I am a man of honor. The army is needed to supply arms and medical supplies to my countrymen who are fighting in the mountains of our homeland. Brave men. But if help does not reach them soon, they will die in their thousands. So you will understand that any methods I have used to gain this money are fully justified. No matter how extreme. Yes? What do you want? I want to talk to someone in authority. No one is allowed in here. By whose orders? Captain Svanovsky. My credentials. I demand to see Captain Svanovsky at once. It will do you no good. Then tell him that if he refuses, I shall have the villa surrounded by police. full possession of the facts, Captain Zvenoski. I demand that you release... That I release Mr. Jason King. Aubrey Jakes, come on, open up. See what that is. Captain! They're closing in. Sullivan. My friend, it looks like you're gonna have to play the king a little while longer. A decoy, good. You go ahead, we'll have you well covered. This is an emergency. Put me through to the Naples police. Come on!
Are you all right? Of course he is. He thinks he's Mark Kane. I've got another one for your collection, Jason. Charlie Crippen's twin. Hey!